Oh my god. Uh, I don't think that's where I'm supposed to be standing. Excuse me? Okay. Well, well, well. This is certainly a glitch I've never met before. Welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Last time we took down the greatest gym leader Pokemon has ever made, Larry. I don't know how Pokemon can get away with making a character so bland and yet everyone goes absolutely nuts for him. But today, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do because as always, we've got a couple options. Is that an item up on that roof? Okay, well I know what we're doing first. Pretty sure we've got to jump from this cliff up by the top of the town. Maybe it was actually the cliff a little bit lower cause I'm not quite sure if we're gonna be able to reach that roof from here. Oh, it looks like we're just barely gonna make it. And there's actually a TM up here for Baton Pass. Really? Okay, well I was expecting something a little bit more exciting but at least there is still another item over on that roof. I just don't wanna mess up these jumps. Oh my gosh. Okay, we made it. Oh no, Goraidon, please no. Oh God. Don't tell me that after I made it all this way, we're gonna freaking fall off because, oh no, please. Oh wait, as always, we just have to backwards jump. <laughs> what is it with this game and backwards jumps, man? Anyway, it's gonna be a rare candy and I feel like there's still even more. Yep, we got one over there. Let's fly to it and it's going to be an X special attack. All right, well, that was fun. Get a little bit of roof jumping, feeling like Assassin's Creed. So now let's actually decide what we're going to be doing next in the game itself. As we open up our map, you will see that we have now completed 12 out of the 18 challenges here in the Paldea region. And at least according to this map I found online. Next up, we should probably be taking on this gym up on Glaciado Mountain or the Psychic Gym all the way down in the bottom left corner. But... I'm not sure that I want to take on either of those since I don't want to do two gyms in a row. So I'm thinking we actually go after the final Titan search for the false dragon. A highly dangerous Pokemon said to lurk in Casaroya Lake, luring other creatures close and then feeding on them. Appearance unknown, but mouth likely large. Okay. I like that they have to specify that its mouth is large. Very dangerous indeed. So we're gonna set that as our destination and set sail, or rather set flight over to the lake. And if you guys are excited, make sure to smash that like button as this area is probably a little bit too high level for us. You saw on the map there, the false dragon Titan is apparently at level 55. But the thing about Titan Pokemon that's a little bit deceiving, at least in terms of their levels, is you actually get to use your whole team against them. And right now, my team is looking quite stacked. Well, not exactly against the Titan, but RuPaul's at level 39. That's definitely nothing to slouch at. The thing is, even though it says this Titan is Dragon type, I have a little bit of inside info that its true nature is closer to a Water type, which I'm guessing is why they call it the False Titan. So we're gonna bring along a couple of electric types and even Mary just for good measure since she's actually really close to evolving. And just for this episode, we're gonna check out Gatomota, the Meowscarada, who's super fast. What the heck? Are you Naruto running right now? Bro, that's sick. Okay, maybe you can keep up with me on Koraidon actually, as I wanna check out something that I learned about Glaciado Mountain. So before we take on the False Titan, we're gonna head back the way that we came into this city. And actually, on the way, we've got a trainer that I somehow missed. And she's actually got a Mudsdale, which is the perfect Pokemon to try out Nyaskarada's signature attack, Flower Trick, which always guaranteed lands critical hits, and it's actually gonna one-shot it. Okay. I don't know if my levels were, like, insanely higher than it, necessarily, but considering Mudsdale is known to be, like, physically defensive, I feel like that was a lot of damage and we're gonna continue our trek through this foresty area right outside of medali and on to the lake i actually see a tower right in front of us and i think i'm getting really close to those 999 gimme ghoul coins now oh my gosh the toad school my dude <laughs> i love that running animation 
Why is it so hilarious? I can't with it. But I haven't really noticed all that many other new Pokemon recently. Got a Steeny, and I guess Breedent hasn't been in the wild yet. Oh my god, a Psychic Seed? Okay. Actually just picked up a Grassy Seed too, so I guess you can get all the types of seeds here. As well as Primate, which isn't quite a new Pokemon, but does have a new evolution, so let me fight you! Even though it's actually, uh, well, Miascarada rather is Grass and Dark type, so if we don't one-shot this thing, or it goes for a fighting move, oh my god, okay, maybe I underestimated how powerful Power Trick is. Jeez, I kind of wanted to catch that Primate, but nope, we're not even going to get the chance, as Gatomota will be learning Night Slash. Guess you're more of a physical attacker then, huh? I mean, I probably would have, or could have guessed that from its main move being physical, but still, that means Quaquaval, Miascarada, both physical attackers, Skeledurge, or Fuecoco's final evolution, the only special attacker this gen. I don't think the other two are really like that mixed either. In fact, Fuecoco might be the only one that's kind of like, you might be able to run physical or special attack on it. Oh my gosh, is that what I think it is? Yo, <laughs> come here little guy, don't you dare run away from me. You're so cute. Finally, a new Pokemon, Tatsugiri at level 51. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, maybe we can still do some damage to it with the flower trick. It always gets crit, so uh, yeah, still not going to be all that much. But we do resist its attacks too, so we shouldn't be all that scared, I suppose. I'm a little scared of the accuracy drop though. Wait, never mind. Flower Trick also never misses, so even the muddy water lowering our accuracy does not matter one bit. We critical hit it down to red health, and now we should be able to catch it, though I'm not really sure because Tatsugiri here has a little something special to it that might just affect its catch rate or not. We got it! The Mimicry Pokemon not only has multiple forms, but you can see there is actually a dragon and water type. But it's a small dragon Pokemon. It lives inside the mouth of Dondozo to protect itself from enemies on the outside. So if you were paying attention to the intro, you should be able to put one and one together and figure out that Tatsugiri, or Sushi as I'm going to call it, is in fact the Titan Pokemon. Or is it? I guess we'll find out, because uh, I'm not even really sure how it works myself. <laughs> I have an idea, but I haven't actually played through it or seen any gameplay of it. And like I mentioned, it does actually have multiple forms, so already you can see here the yellow form of it. Should we actually fight it? I mean, I guess we might as well show it off, but I don't really want to fight it, because yeah, it's still level 52, man. Maybe we shouldn't be in this lake just yet, but at the same time, I kind of want a bit of a challenge. Like, not everyone is going to go through this game in the same order. And so far, I feel like I've been doing it the most, like, vanilla way. Trying to ch take on every challenge in, like, the quote-unquote correct order. Or at least in the order of, like, weakest to strongest. Like, obviously, this game is about player choice. And, like, you can take on anything in whatever order you want, right? So... Let's try it. Hey there, Orange. Rumor has it the false dragon titan lurks somewhere in this lake, yeah? But not a single person's ever caught a glimpse of it. Must be some kind of truly terrifying beast. If only he knew. How are we supposed to search for a thing when we don't even know what it looks like? Sure would be handy if it just ran around crying, I'm the titan, or something. If only, right? Right. Well, like I said, I have a feeling that, uh... It's not actually as terrifying as Arvin seems to think, but we'll see when we get there. What's this? A Pokemon League rep by a tower? Okay. Uh, don't think I've beat any trainers yet. Yeah, this uh, only counts for the lake. And I haven't even seen any trainers yet, to be honest. So let's just head up the tower where I'm sure we're at least going to get ourselves another Gimme Ghoul and maybe even the evolution at last, because last I checked, I was at around 800 coins. I actually went back to like all the old towers and all of the Gimme Ghoul chests had respawned. Oh my gosh, thank goodness. I thought for a second there actually wasn't one here, but uh, I wonder what level it's gonna be at. 
Probably shouldn't send out Fred, especially considering it's raining, but as long as it's not like insanely high level or anything, of course. The first level 50 Gimme Ghoul, and it's all on Fred to fight it. Well, as far as I know, Gimme Ghoul doesn't actually learn any moves aside from Astonish and some other move that it got from the very beginning. I think like Tackle or something, so yeah, not really going to be doing too much damage. Well, I could go for some licks too and hopefully get the Paralysis. Oh my gosh, it works like a charm every dang time. And it keeps getting rattled, but that doesn't really matter because yeah, it's literally just going Astonish and Tackle, which do absolutely nothing. So <laughs> I just noticed our trainer's up on the wall again. Awesome. Let's try going for a Luxury Ball then. I want to catch this one in uh, something special, though I'm not sure about its catch rate. So yeah, it's not really going to work. Oh my god, where the heck? Inside of the wall. That's not good. Why don't we try a Premier Ball then? It's always been my favorite kind of ball, right? It's always gotta work. Oh my god, it actually is? No way! The critical capture! Oh god, we're inside of the wall again. Okay, thank goodness. That is our third Gimme Ghoul now, but the highest level by far. I'm not even gonna give you a nickname unless I decide to actually evolve you. But uh, I think I saw that. Wait a minute. Really? Spinel? I thought it was going to be our little Dolive evolving, but no, Spinel with the surprise evolution into Tinkaton, the best Pokemon in this gen. I have seen so many freaking memes about this Pokemon recently. It is absolutely crazy. Like, I can tell people definitely like this one. The Hammer Pokemon, an intelligent one that has a very daring disposition. It knocks rocks into the sky with its hammer, aiming for flying Corviknight. And yeah, that's definitely the main reason why people find this Pokemon so hilarious. But also, Gigaton Hammer. Wait till you see this 160 power Steel type move, but it can't be used twice. So I guess that's like the downside. I mean, it's not like you have to recharge like Giga Impact or Hyper Beam or something. You just can't use it twice in a row, which is Totally fine, as we're actually going to have a double evolution! Yo! That's so cool! I've been wondering the whole playthrough how a double evolution would work in this game, and apparently it just waits in line for the first Pokemon to evolve, as now we've got Arboliva, the grass and normal olive Pokemon. They're calm and compassionate, and will share their delicious nutrient-rich oil with weakened Pokemon. This one, of course, being some extra virgin olive oil since we nicknamed her Mary, but that's two evolutions back to back. We got Spinel and Mary. Let's check out Spinel first. Oh my God, you're huge. What the heck? Not just the hammer either. Like, I didn't realize Tinkaton was this big next to our player. Oh my gosh. That's actually awesome. Okay. I love it. But I also want to check out Mary, who I feel like is going to be a little bit smaller since we saw in the evolution. Definitely a lot smaller. I'm not sure if that's just because the one I have is small or if all Arboliva. Well, I mean, Pokemon do have different sizes, but they kind of have like an average size. Arboliva doesn't seem to be the biggest. What are you looking at? Oh, that is actually a pretty sight. Oh my gosh. Okay, jump scare. Whoa! A little too close there, Mary. I know you're excited about evolving, but uh, calm down a bit, would ya? Okay, <laughs> let's get you back in the ball. And actually, now that we got Tinkaton, that will be another great help against the false Dragon Titan. If it does actually end up being a Dragon type, we have a Fairy type now to counter it. Look at this lens flare right now. It looks kind of nice, but it is time to see exactly what all the ruckus is with this false Dragon anyway as we fly on down to the lake, which is not looking all that great. Like, I expected a little bit more of a texture on it or something. Well, I guess with the sun in the way, you can see a little bit more of the water actually, but what the heck? Wasn't there a Terra Pokemon here just now? Did it disappear? Or is it this little Bergmite? Oh my gosh, look at it. Oh, it's so cute. That can't be it though, right? I swear, I hear it sparkling, but I don't see it. 
I'm a little bit confused. It sounds like it's literally right around here. Okay, well, <laughs> on then to the Titan, which I guess is on these little islands. I swear there was an item right there. Again, I'm just losing or missing out on all these things. Yo, Tatsugiri in the water. Sutan? Wait, are you a special Tatsugiri? I guess maybe I'll fight it? Not sure why I got the Motas on the floaty right now, considering this water is like two feet deep. Wait, not even. This is like two inches deep on the rock that got the Motas on. My trainer's in more danger of drowning right now, if anything. Like, what is happening? Let's finish it off with a nice slash and see if this actually is a special Tatsugi. Because it was like already there and had a text bubble and everything. What the heck? Okay, that's weird. I don't really know what was up with it, but there seemed to be more of them. Su su su! <laughs> Maybe this guy's got a little bit more context. Oh my gosh, they're so cute! Tai Shi! <laughs> What's up with them, man? Please tell me you've got some info. You've sure put some effort coming all the way out. Really? You know nothing! Oh my god. Uh... I don't think that's where I'm supposed to be standing. Excuse me? Okay. Well, well, well. This is certainly a glitch I've never met before. My trainer and the other one just decided they both want to be on that side of the battlefield today. That is amazing. But we've got a Kapuraja, which, uh, not really the best matchup for Meowskarada. Let's swap over to Pomahot from all the way over there. Yeah, my trainer's just staying over there. I guess this glitch is staying around. I love it. As it goes for Iron Head, oh my god. Even though that's not very effective, it definitely hurted. And it's probably because I just realized it's level 54. Yeah, I should not be fighting any of the trainers here. Like, I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> we already knew that the Pokemon were super strong. And the Titan, the only reason I said that we might be able to handle it is because it's 6 versus 1. Is it time? I think it's time! For Gigaton Hammer! Oh my god, I couldn't even tell what it just did. Because the particle effects got all over the screen, but we finished it, and I actually decided to revive Fred after all, so he does get all that juicy experience. Though not quite gonna hit level 35 from it, I'm a little surprised. But wait, you didn't actually tell me anything about the... Come on, man. I mean, he did give us one piece of advice, and that's that there's no Pokemon centers around here, so... If we want to fight this Titan, well, now half of my Pokemon are dead, so, uh, we're probably gonna need to go heal somewhere. I guess fly back to town? Where the heck is this Titan, though? Do we just have to take down all these little sushis? Or maybe it's this one. He seems a lot bigger than the rest, like, almost twice the size. What the frick? Are you actually the false Titan? He says Titan. <gasps> Oh my god! Okay, well, I am really glad I decided to heal up, as, uh, seems like we're fighting a giant freaking catfish! And I have Spinel leading off, because I was ready to gigaton hammer that little sushi fish, but this one's actually a water type, so I don't think gigaton hammer is really going to be as good, because it's not very effective, so I'll go for play rough instead? It sounded like it was also not very effective from the sound effect, but I don't think it actually was. No, yeah, that's just how Play Rough sounds, I guess. And the first time we got a critical hit, so now we're not going to do nearly as much. Oh, I should have brought Mac and Cheese because of the Super Fang strategy. But it's fine. We still have a couple of other Pokemon, including Phoebe, Luma, who's also electric type, two grass types like... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can handle Dondozo, the false dragon titan, who as you'll soon find out is not actually a dragon type, since the wild charge there hits for super effective. I can confirm to you guys this is actually just a pure water type Pokemon, so definitely bring along some electric, some grass type Pokemon if you've got them, and this titan should not be as hard as uh, the text made it out to be. I mean, like, on the map, when we read about it, it said it was, like, super duper difficult or something, but... So far, so good. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon, though. That body slam definitely did a number on us. But another Electro Ball? 
Is that enough? I know that we have to get it down to a certain threshold and then, you know, it runs away and we can get the cutscene and everything, but uh, I guess not quite yet. Hmm. I should have actually saved Luma and them so they get experience. You know what? I'm gonna toss Luma a revive at least so she can get a little bit of XP from this. Pretty sure Miyaskarada can take one flattening at least. Oh, but we get paralyzed! That sucks. I don't know why, I feel like we might still be faster than this big old jellyfish. I mean, catfish. Okay, no, we are not. So sad. But I guess Miyaskarada was already level 40. I don't want our secondary starter to end up higher level than our main one. That would really be kind of weird. So let's send out Mary, our final grass type, to hopefully take it down to the HP we need. Oh my god, please survive. Okay, we're fine. We got Seed Sower too, okay. New ability, incoming. I believe that summons Grassy Terrain whenever our Beliva takes a hit, as the Energy Ball will finally make it go back down to the depths. Did it just flip upside down? Is it dead? No, I think it just, uh, swimming away. I can literally see it right there. <laughs> it kind of looks like it's belly side up, but I highly doubt that, because, you know, that would mean that it's dead. Right? Anyway, um, we could go back to the Pokemon Center, or we could just use one of my 30 revives. Like, I'm sure I can spare a couple of these, right? Also got Mac and Cheese back on the team so that the second time we fight them, we can go for that Super Fang strategy. Even though it doesn't actually work most of the time, the second battle. Because it's going to be a tag team with Arvin, and I feel like the Titan Pokemon gets more health too from the Herba Mystica, so... Not gonna count on that, but oh my gosh, we have another little dragon here, Dratini, the true king of this lake. But again, it's gonna be at level 50, so uh, somehow Mac and Cheese are actually faster, which means we can get our Super Fang off, but we're probably so dead. Oh wait, what the heck? We actually live it, okay. Let me go for one more so we can get it down to almost red health, and we're gonna go Dragon Dance now. I see. You're also a connoisseur of mac and cheese. Well, I appreciate you for giving me this opportunity, as now I will go for my Ultra Ball! Please stay in there. Please stay in there. Oh no! And go for another Ultra Ball! Maybe second time's the charm? Oh, come on! Am I gonna have to weaken you more? Oh god, you're going for another Dragon Dance. This Dratini is going to sweep through my team if I'm not careful. I feel like I should just go for, like, another attack. Uh, maybe Flail will knock it down to red without killing it. Pretty sure Flail does more damage the lower HP the user is. So since we're full health, I don't think it'll do that much. Oh my gosh, I definitely clenched right there. Bro, the rain stopped. Wait, that means it's been a while, right? So... Maybe at this point, Timer Ball might actually be better. I don't think it's actually been that many turns, but... Okay, maybe it has, because Dratini has been caught. The Dragon Pokemon. Dang, that's how you know it's an OG. It's literally just the Dragon Pokemon. Oh my god, look at that Veluza zipping around. Oh my gosh, another one too. This area is a little bit laggy. Ain't it? Uh, I'm a little bit worried that my Switch is about to die or something. That would suck. So let's just uh, get away from these Pokemon. I'm feeling like it's lagging because there's just too many Pokemon at once. Those Dondozo especially are way too big for this world. So yeah, look, now the game is definitely running a lot smoother. And I think that little dude is probably the Titan, but I kind of want to... Oh my gosh, a Vaporeon! Well, if it wasn't for my... Half of my team being dead, I would try to catch it. What is this? Father Toxicroak? Okay, that's sick. We know that the False Titan is the other way, but might as well explore a little bit more of this lake while we're here. I'm also kind of stalling for time because I want it to be day when we fight the Titan. I feel like the last 10 episodes, all the major fights have been at nighttime, so I want at least one to be in the day. What the heck? There's an Altaria party going on up here? I guess Swablu and Altaria family. And a TM for Dragon Claw. Nice. So this is kind of like the Lake of Rage or Lake of Outrage of Paldea, I guess. 
What was it called again? Is it actually a reference to it? Caseroya Lake. Yeah, I have no idea what the heck that means. Like, doesn't really ring a bell in Spanish. The only thing that really sounds close to that is casserole? Wait, I just realized the Titan is marking over here anyway. But I don't see the giant rock that there usually is to like... Oh my god, wait. Hello? That's just love appearing and disappearing, don't ya? Alright, well, I'm gonna go check out this. Oh my god, is that a even gianter one? I can't really tell. Okay, yep, there it goes. That thing could swallow Goraidon whole. Oh my god. Level 52. Well, we do still have the Super Fang, and we're still faster somehow. I guess I did expect to be faster than Dondozo, though. That thing does not look like it would move very quickly, but still, the fact that Mac and Cheese has held up for this long, and I went and jinxed, jinxed it. Of course. But I guess you jinxed it too, going for Rain Dance twice, dude? That's uh, considered unlucky in some cultures. No, it's not. I totally just made that up. <laughs> Let's see who's truly got luck on their side as we go for the Dive Ball, which does work better on fish Pokemon. I really thought it was going to cash. What the heck is... Oh my god, dude just summoned Sushi out of the sky. <laughs> that might be the best attack I've ever seen. When in doubt, go for the Premier Ball! Imagine that was actually a critical capture, I would have lost it, but really? Okay, I guess Premier Balls really are just OP. As we finally get it, and... Uh, okay, no. Fred is still not quite level 36. I don't know who that was actually learning Fake Out, but maybe I should have grabbed it. We've got the Catfish Pokemon. The big Catfish. Actually... This Pokemon's a glutton, but it's bad at getting food, so it teams up with Tatsugiri to catch prey. Ah, that's what you guys were doing. Okay. Well, I'm gonna name you Big Donda. Large and in charge. I'm not even sure that it's really gonna fit in the Pokedex. Oh my god. Okay, even the Pokedex is lagging at this point. Okay, my game is not having a fun time in this lake area. Uh, looks like it's a terrestrialized Azumarill, which might be kind of cool. Well, it always depends on what type it actually is, but I'm not even going to bother checking because all the Pokemon in this area have been way too high level for us, and even though so far we've had pretty good luck with catching them, I don't want to keep risking that luck, so please let me run away, little Tatsugiri. Thank you very much. I just want to see what's on this little island. More Tatsugiris! Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. I mean, I guess there is a Gimme Ghoul coin. Bro, why are you outside of the water? You're gonna die! Oh my god! <laughs> Something about this don't feel right. We got Pomot in the water, Veluza out of it. Uh, wait, you're actually just gonna stay outside of the water like that now? Okay, <laughs> why do I feel like it was never supposed to come out here? And now it doesn't know how to find the water again. Oh god, I feel bad for that poor Veluza. Maybe I should have just put it out of its misery, but I feel bad doing that too. Oh wait, no, it's back in the water. Thank goodness. Don't have to worry about that anymore. Let's just go take on this Titan before my game ends up crashing. And I think it might actually be this little Tatsugiri, just like our first encounter with Dondos. Oh my god, dude just totally snuck up on us. If I was standing a little bit to the right, that tail slap totally would have whacked us instead. Oh my gosh, it's the little sushi that goes for the Herba Mystica. Orange, did you find the Titan? I mean, I think. So that's it. Sure is one big, uh, dragon? Wait, is it even a dragon? Or is it a fish? Oh my god, I just got it. It's a catfish. That's why it's the false dragon, because... Catfish is also a term used to refer to people that fake their images and persona online, like the false titan. Huh? Yeah, I know it's a lot to get, Arvin. I've watched a lot of MTV's Catfish in my life, so kind of an expert at this point. The little sushi guy got eaten up? <laughs> Yeesh! Didn't expect to see the food chain in action today! It's time to team up to take down another catfish. 
but not the MTV kind. This is the real deal Dondozo. And I forgot to heal, uh, of course. Well, maybe we can finally test out Revival Blessing. Oh wait, we can only use it on ourselves. How does that work? This food chain's got me pretty fascinated. I'm gonna dig in and make a meal out of this battle. Okay, what does that mean, Arvin? We're using Revival Blessing, but who's it gonna revive? Oh, there we go. We can actually revive Mac and Cheese, since they're the only one that's actually dead. I wonder if Mac and Cheese weren't alive, if it would have even let us pick that move. Oh my god, what just happened to your animation, Don Dozo? Kinda tripped out a little bit there. Maybe it's a little too large now to even work properly, but uh, it went for Greedent, so that means we still get a chance to use our Wild Charge, even though we're gonna end up taking more damage with the uh, recoil. Yeah, okay, I guess the animation's just supposed to be like that then. Arvin goes for takedown. We're actually not doing too bad so far. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, I feel like the first battle with the Titan is always harder, but using something like Super Fang makes it a whole lot easier, so that's always my recommendation. Well, the second time around, Super Fang hasn't really worked how it's intended, or maybe it was never intended to take half damage off the Titans. You could also just get super lucky like I've been getting, and the Titan Pokemon just decides not to ever attack you. Please don't tell me I just jinxed it. Order up! And it goes for Greedon still! Okay! Phoebe's just gonna get the clean sweep of this catfish. Or not. I didn't realize that uh, Arvin was out of Pokemon. Wait, actually? What if we just Terrastalize? Then we'll do a little bit of extra damage and maybe enough to finish it. I guess my only worry now is that Wild Charge still has that recoil, so uh, Palma is probably still gonna die and therefore not get the experience, but it's okay, at least she gets the satisfaction of being the one that took the catfish down! Catfishing is bad! Don't do it! Oh no! Poor little Phoebe is gonna knock herself out with the enemy. I wasn't catfishing nobody, at least I wear the electric type proudly on my head. While Dondozo's now gotta live on with that guilt, knowing that they got caught, just pretending to be a dragon. We did it! Yay! Now that the Titan's taken care of, next up on the menu is that Herba Mystica. What was that? Hmm? Is it the little sushi? Oh my god, it escaped without becoming that thing's lunch! Ta... Ta... Titan! What? Does that thing want to fight too? Bro, imagine it grows humongous? Oh, wait a minute, what the frick? My dude! Tatsugiri, what are you doing? <laughs> this is the true false dragon, and now we get to use Mac and Cheese's patented Super Fang! Oh my god, it's got muddy water! That means it hits both of us! No! We don't actually get to use the Super Fang! Oh my god, I don't know what the heck just happened there. I think it was the floaty? Because Mac and Cheese are too small to be in the water, apparently. But uh, this is a water dragon type, which means that Spinel should actually be super effective with the Play Rock. I wish we could use the Gigaton Hammer instead. That would be epic, but... As you saw there, it's not very effective, so I'm not even gonna bother or go for it. Not really worth it. Arvin's Greedent gets completely wiped out, which is not good because I don't think he actually has any other Pokemon. So it's all on Spinel now, but we got a crit. Okay, maybe we still have a chance then. Oh, wait. Oh, I see when. Never mind. For a second, I thought I was in danger, but we're totally fine. That's not very effective. It does lower our speed, but as long as it doesn't have a surprise earthquake or fire move or something, we should be okay. Just keeps going for those icy wings. Yeah, we got this in the bag. Play rock! Do we get to terrestrialize again, by the way? Oh, we do. What the heck? We never charged up our orb, though. Well, I kind of want to go for the Gigaton Hammer, even though it's not very effective. I feel like with the Terrastalize, we might still be able to finish it. So Spinel, it's your turn now to Terrastalize and get that 
giant axe on your head. Mama always said, best to quit while you're ahead. But I'm not quitting. I'll never quit as long as I've got Gigaton Hammer! Obliterate! Oh my god, it didn't die? Are you serious? No way, come on, man. I'm really gonna have to go for it again. Oh, I forgot. That's the whole thing about Gigaton Hammer is can't actually use it twice. Wait, how did you just... Oh, right, because we became Steel-type. It can now use Dragon Attacks on us, but this is fine. We'll finish it with Brutal Swing. Bit anticlimactic. You know, I wanted the Gigaton Hammer to just explode it, but uh, Spinel gets the dub in the end as we defeat the Titan Tatsugiri. And now we get our well-earned XP. Sadly, none for mac and cheese. Whew! Nice job, Orange! That's my hard-working little buddy! Maybe the Titan was both those Pokémon together? Like some kind of combo meal? Everything else about them seems to be food-related, so... Yeah, that works for me. The little one came out of here, which means... There should be some Urban Mystica inside. Let's go! What's it going to be this time? We've had spicy, sweet, salty... Savory? That must be it! Why is there a luxury ball on the floor this time? What the heck? Was that there from the very first cave we went in and I just never noticed? The last Urban Mystica! So excited! We found the spicy! I could have sworn we already had spicy. Okay, let's see what the book has to say. Seems spicy Herba Mystica is supposed to boost your metabolism. It gives your circulation a boost and helps flush out all those toxins, along with a ton of sweat. Well, I already sweat way too much as it is, so uh, I'm gonna skip out on that one. It's chow time! Yeah! cha and here we go! Trusty Armin's Chocolate Block Full of Cheer Final Herb Super Sandwich! Squeeze this batch tight and cry beautiful tears of friendship as you eat, okay? Okay. I'll give it to you, Arvin. You've been our best friend in this game, and I definitely did not expect it when we first started. Like, honestly, this character has grown on me so much, and in the trailers, I thought he was gonna be the one I least liked. But I guess that just proves the whole don't judge a book by a cover thing is true. Do you want to give Koraidon your sandwich? Do you even have to ask at this point, game? Come on. It's time for our final upgrade. As Koraidon will go Super Saiyan! And now we can climb up vertical surfaces. I guess it's Mubastif's turn then. Oh yeah, the one we really want to see go Ultra Instinct. Look at him! Still can't believe those aren't actually its eyes. Come on, bud, eat up! Oh no. Why did they cut the music? Oh, please don't tell me this is gonna be sad. It's gonna make you all better, I promise. Orange and I really did our best to get this for you. We're gonna play with your favorite ball as much as you want. You know, just like we used to. Oh, don't make me cry, man. Please, get better. That's all I want, really. Oh my gosh, man. Don't do this to me. And since this is the end of Arvin's story, do we get a special cutscene? <gasps> the boss Tiff. You did your best. Bud. No. <gasps> oh my god, is this a metaphor? Please, no. <gasps> yes! He's up! For a second there, I thought this was gonna take a very dark turn. Oh my god. Buddy! Bud! Oh, I love you. 
my best buddy. Oh, I can't hold back the tears. I know, bud. Me too. <laughs> I'm not actually crying, by the way. It's just something in my eye. <laughs> Rototo! Ooh, calls happening right in the cave this time. Hello! Yes, we know! What? It's his mom! Oh, I almost forgot! Seems that Koraidon has regained all of its powers, except for the power to battle. It should be now able to climb up any vertical surfaces. Yeah, we know that too. Oh wait, I probably should have read the instructions though. Whoops! I knew you were the right one to entrust it to, Orange. <laughs> listen to you, like you had anything to do with it. Ooh, little bit of mother-son bickering. That voice, Arvikins, are you there? Sorry, I just had to add that. <laughs> I've been searching so long for a way to reach you. Because cause no one else can get into my lab but you. Oh, wow. Garbage. Excuse me? Please take Orange back to the lighthouse with you. To the lab on Poco Path. I'll reach out once more when you arrive there. Wait. Where is the professor then? <coughs> Mommy issues. She's only using you. Yet another reason to root for Arvin. Without a doubt, this has been my favorite story, at least of the three main rivals. I guess you probably already know, but that, that's my mom. Always buried under her work, off pursuing her own research, never at home with me. That's the first time I've even heard her voice in years, you know? Years? And now what? First thing I get is to be treated like some kind of errand boy? That is pretty infuriating. She's seriously unbelievable. But I'm guessing you and Koraidon probably want to go, eh? Not gonna lie, I feel like my blood's boiling. But, sure, fine, I'll get you into the lab. What else can I do? The lab is off Poco Path, at the lighthouse where you and I first met. Come on, let's get moving before I change my mind. All right, all right. But actually, we're going to be wrapping up the episode here, as that luxury ball is seriously still there? Bro, that's got to be a glitch then. Mom, where have you been all this time? Probably off hitting that like button, as I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Wait, I just noticed Fred hit level 36, but didn't evolve. What the heck?